It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by the Beatsy. People who cross paths with well-known criminals and victims shared their unsettling encounters. That I'm into. This one I'm into, guys. We recently asked members of the BuzzFeed community to tell us about the time they had met or interacted with someone connected to a well-known crime. Here are the bone-chilling tales. Number one, the Zodiac Killer. My father had his medical practice in the city of Richmond, California, during the 60s and until the day he died in 1982. He had the Zodiac Killer for a patient. The patient always made sure he was the last one to be seen. He always talked about the case to my dad, bragged about all his weapons, and even resembled the famous sketch. Now, my dad was a first lieutenant infantry in World War II and did not scare easily, but this man gave him the creeps. My dad eventually sent a copy of this patient's handwriting to the cops, and the guy stopped being treated by my dad. Shortly after that, petty acts of vandalism began to occur around my house. I was around four years old when this went down, and after that, my parents would not let me out of the house to play by myself. Let's just see. What's different there? His nose, a little different. Lips are a little different. This, he looks like he's menacing. This one looks like he's taking a deuce. You know, it still looks like the same guy to me. I don't see any update. Number two, Dennis Rader. He was just, I guess, serial killer. I don't know. It doesn't have a name. He wasn't Zodiac. He didn't get a cool name. You just call him serial killer. So Dennis Rader, serial killer. Growing up, I lived next to a kid a few years younger than me. He lived with his dad. He told me that when he was a baby, his mom was found murdered while he was in the house. His dad has always been the top suspect, but they never convicted anyone of the murder. I spent years side-eyeing that man. You know, giving him the side-eye. On one January, the famous serial killer from my state suddenly resurfaced, and his wife was murdered by Dennis Rader, a.k.a. the BTK. Oh, BTK was a pretty big killer, right? My dad is one of the detectives who caught BTK, He has been on numerous TV talk shows about the case and continues to travel the country discussing it with other law enforcement agencies. Rose West. Who knows about Rose West? She looks like a real winner right there. Rose West, serial killer. Not me. But back in the day, my friend's mother was offered a lift from Rose. And she was on her bicycle. If she had accepted, my friend probably wouldn't even exist. I was speechless. The Branch Davidians, the cult. My cousin in San Antonio had a house that was basically a party house. One of his friends was an EMT, and this friend and his partner would hang out with us while we were on duty. They would get calls to go to car wrecks, etc., and then come back and tell us the gruesome details. His partner later joined the Branch Davidians, and believe it or not, his last name was Branch. So, Branch from the Branch Davidians. He left the compound before the fire, but was arrested for being one of the shooters on the day of the raid. He has since been released from prison. If you guys don't remember, David Koresh said he was the second coming. I heard him play guitar recently. He's actually pretty good. And, and he wrote a song, something like um, Darkness Into Light. And it was pretty good. <laughs> like... It's just like a musician who's just like, I'm God. Like, no, you're not, dude. You're a decent musician. Guitar is eh, you know, but his voice was actually pretty solid. Like, let me see. You guys want to hear him real quick? Let's see if we can find David Koresh singing. Check this out. It's not terrible, like For I said. a great way to package your products. And with Sticker Mule's not order, terrible. custom poly mailers has... Listen. Nice, right? Dog was in the night. That's got like some weird. Uh, you know, he's a fan of. What's that English band? There's that English band that sang just like that. Um, it, they have that song that goes the. Um, It's Morrissey, right? It's like a Morrissey vibe. He's got a Morrissey vibe going. That's David Koresh right there, guys. He may have been the son of God. I mean, I don't know. Pretty good voice. Singing like an angel. I'm just kidding. Not really. It's good. It's not terrible. Alex Murdaugh, killer. When the whole Alex Murdaugh murders occurred, 
when the whole Alec Murdoch, I don't know, this is someone speaking. Clearly they're from some backwoods. Like, when the whole, okay, I think they're going, when the whole Alec Matt Murdoch murders occurred here in South Carolina, everyone was shocked. You know, turns out my stepsister was banging it out with Paul, and she's friends with them. You know, they were doing it in the back of the pickup. And the son was also killed, you know, not while they were doing it in the truck. This was after. Uh, he was at her birthday party just a few months before. Apparently, the FBI even called the circle of friends asking questions about Alex. Did you guys know about that one? I bet you didn't. Now you know. Murdoch. Murdoch. Murdoch? How do you even say that name? Like, I hate it. I hate that name so much. Because it's like, is it Murdoch? Is it Murdoch? Is it Murdoch? I mean, like, what are we talking about with that dumb name? You're a murderer. Indeed. You murdered the English language and vocabulary for history of time. Um, my name's Alex Murdoch. What is it? Is it, how do you spend, how do you finish out in that GH over there? We laugh. Murdaf. It's Murdaf. <laughs> Some people are wondering, do we do Murdaw? Do we do Murdog? Do we do Murdoch? No, it's Murdaf. Because it's like laugh, but murd in the front. Murdaf. Murdaf. You guys didn't know it, but I just cleared it up for you. That's my Latin, you know, experience. You know, when you speak Latin fluently <laughs> and you see a mur Murdaf on the screen and everybody's trying to figure out still, is it Murdaw? Is it Murdoch? Murdog? Nope. It's Murdaf. Sometimes you need to have a linguistic expert show up and, and let you know, inform you, you know. <sighs> Guys, I'm proud and, and I'm happy to be that guy, you know, to share the Murdaf, Murdaf with you. Um, so anyway, Murdaf in prison still today. Killed his son, killed his wife, you know. He's like a super rich dude. Like how much money was Alex Murdaf? Well, let's see. As of 2023, stands at $2 million in 2022, was estimated at 1.8 million. But they had like all this land, so how much? I thought it was worth more than that. Buster, oh, that's Buster Murdaf. Guys, Buster Murdaf is the son, I think, right? How did Alex Murdaf do financially? Murdaf stole more than 12 million over a decade. What the freaking hell? This guy's a, a thief and a murderer? Wow, what a winner. Murder F, murders and mysteries timeline. Key events in South Carolina family scandals and deaths. Waters said Tuesday that Murder F stole more than $12 million over a decade. And then he murdered his wife and his kid too. That was you know, the second part of it. But the first part, he's a thieving mother, you know? And he's in Hampton County Law. He was at the Hampton County Law Firm. Murder F, Murder F. Sentenced to 27 years in prison for financial crimes. Where is the murder crimes? What are we talking about here, Joanne? <laughs> Joanne! Can you please keep the wheeze down back there? <laughs> you know, Joanne, when I'm here and I'm doing the news and you're back there, you're dropping them. You know, you're wheezing, you're doing a dropper. Joanne, no! What did you eat, Joanne? That's disgusting. Piggish, really. Murdaf. Guys, if you've not looked up Murdaf yet, I just did the work for you. You don't have to look him up anymore. We did that here in Mark Inspire show. So, uh, have you crossed paths with Murdaf? South Carolina. Good old Murdaf. He's always up for a good laugh, you know. Ted Abundy. This one's a good one. Ted Bundy in the late 70s was on a killing spree. I was a little kid playing in the same house that had played in 20 years earlier. We found out recently that my grandparents brought, bought their house in Tacoma, Washington from Ted's great uncle Jack. Ted and Jack were very close. He was kind of a mentor and father figure. You know, taught him how to murder, you know. And Ted spent a lot of time at his house when he was young, sharpening the knives. Still creeped out by it, you know. <laughs> My Uncle Ted. I mean, Jack. I used to call him Uncle Ted, though, because when he came, he had those eyes right there. You see him? Looks like a sane individual. <laughs> Ted Bundy. Um, so there's another story about John Taylor, convicted killer, 
Also a heck of a wide receiver for the 49ers back in the day, John Taylor. He caught one up the middle from Joe Montana. And Steve Young, Super Bowl, now he's a murderer. Let's see, mom and the girl I went to school with dated John Taylor after the 49ers. He turned out to be a killer and sex offender. You know, he didn't know about that when he was wearing number 82 for the Niners. Why do I remember all these details from like 30 years ago? John Taylor, he played when I was like 12. John Taylor played football when I was like 12 years old, maybe nine. Like I was a kid and I'm recalling details. He was number 82, played for the 49ers. And I remember him catching the ball. He was a great wide receiver. Like everybody liked Jerry Rice, but John Taylor was ridiculous. I used to think to myself, I think John Taylor is better than Jerry Rice, but they, he was always like the number two. He never got a chance to be the guy, but that guy was awesome. Became a murderer though, just, just in case you're wondering. Uh, around the time though, Leanne Tiernan went missing, he attended a parents' evening with my friend's mother. I don't remember much, but my mom thought he was a creep. You know, good wide receiver though, remember that. You guys know about Richard Ramirez? I think they called him the Night Stalker, is that right? Yeah. Richard Ramirez, look at the friggin' gaze on that guy. Who's getting his number? You getting his number? You're asking him out, right? Hey, cutie, what are you doing? I love your cheekbones and the eyes. Again with the eyes, you know? Murderer. Richard Ramirez, serial killer, as you know. Luckily, we didn't meet him, but I was about six months old. You wouldn't have known anyway if you met him. You were six months old. Who's, who said this? I was about six months old when the Night Stalker attacked someone near our home in Orange County, California. My parents and I were asleep in the living room with a baseball bat until he was caught. My dad's best client lived a few doors down from another one of the victims. This guy with the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, I put a pentagram on my hand because I like you. That's what he does when he wants to meet people. Imagine you show up, like you're just there at the deli and you're getting a sandwich, right? You're like, excuse me, sir, can I have a chicken salad on rye? Throw a little crispy bacon on there. You turn around, Richard Ramirez is sitting there and he's just like, he's got the hand up, he's like this. He's like, do you want to hang out? And he's doing, this is his let's be friends move. That's his move. Some people have like a move, you know, when they, like they make the move. This is Ramirez's move. And he does one of these with the eyes, the cat eyes. And then he pushes up the cheekbones a little more. You know, he's bringing them in. You guys think that he went and he like stole these people off the street and he attacked them? No, he went like this. And they were like, can we hang out with you? We love your pentagram hand. You know, I, I know you were into it. You were like, I think I want to hang out with Richard Ramirez in his pentagram hand. Oh goodness, you know, mm, look at me. What a scumbag, you know. He was doing it. He burned that one in. He wanted to make sure he always had it ready to, to make friends. Hey, what's up, buddy? Oh. Oh, you want to be friends? I'm down. No, I'm down. I'll come and hang out with you. Could you do a pentagram thing on my hand, too? Like, how, where do, how, what do I do? Do you have, like, a brander? Like, we could brand it into my hand. Or do you have to knife it? Like, what are we doing here? Because I want to do the same thing. I want to be just like you. I was thinking about it. I'm like, how do I make friends? I am a guy who doesn't have a social ability to interact and create conversation. So what do I need to, what's that? Oh, you want me to just put a pentagram on my hand and go like this whenever I meet people? And then when they see the pentagram, they know that means like we have a bond, a blood bond. It's a blood what? Oath. You have to blood oath it? Oh, Ramirez says you gotta also, once you become friends, you blood oath it. You put a cut into one of the lines of the pentagram on your hand, and then you do like a high five, you know? Growling stomach. I'm starving, Ramirez! You know, you're there killing, pentagramming it. I'm hungry. My pentagram. <sighs> Gosh almighty, you know? That's the problem. This guy is a stupid pentagram. Uh, that's my belly. I'm, gr I'm growling. I'm hungry. I'm a hungry mofo right now. Casey Anthony, mother of victim Kaylee Anthony. I live in Orlando and cross paths with Casey Anthony several times in various circles. Thankfully, I drifted away from the group and, you know, before the death of her daughter, but it still creeps me out when I think about it, you know. She was trying to talk to me about my kids, about child rearing, and I was like, I almost listened, you know. Drew Peterson, 
killer. You guys remember him. I live 10 minutes away from Drew Peterson. Again, 10 minutes away. Do you know how far that is? Just imagine for yourself that you're getting in your car right now and you're driving for 10 minutes and think about how far you are away from your home. That's what this idiot is. Oh my goodness, you're 10 minutes away with Drew Peterson, do not. Stupid idiots. I was in seventh grade when his wife Stacy went missing and he was being investigated for her disappearance and then for his third wife's death. We'd come to school each Monday and talk about where we'd seen him out and about since he was a super cocky, you know, he was super cocky and thought he'd get away with it because uh, he was a cop. We'd see him at McDonald's, Best Buy, etc., in Bolingbrook, Illinois. Luckily, he was convicted of his third wife's murder, but to this day, Stacy has yet to be found. She's not going to be found. Like, he murdered her. When he, she, oh, she's hiding somewhere. She's afraid that he's going to break out of prison to come after her again as, like, her, you know, retribution. Gosh almighty. Ex-police sergeant. Scumbag. You know, when he's a super cocky scumbag like that, look at him. Look at the look in his eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to get away with it. I'm a murderer. Triple, triple murderer. Gosh almighty. Need some food in the belly. John Wayne Gacy. One of my best friends was dating a guy. They really liked each other. He suddenly disappeared from her life. and She found out years later he was a victim of John Wayne Gacy. So he, uh, that's so terrible. <laughs> my best friend in high school is like, dating this guy, you know, and then like, he disappeared. It was weird. She's like, I wonder what, if, what I did. Did I do something wrong? He won't call me back. He's ghosting me. No, he's a ghost. Murdered by John Wayne Gacy. I don't know if you know John Wayne Gacy. Murdered him, the guy. He was a sweet guy. It's kind of his M.O. John Wayne Gacy only went for sweet guys. He was the killer clown. If your friend didn't like clowns, you know, he'd still be alive. But when he saw John Wayne Gacy sitting there in the clown outfit and your friend was like, oh, can I take a photo with you? I love clowns. That was your friend's doing, really. You know. Joseph James D'Angelo. You guys know about J J.D.? We call him J.D. J.D. Angelo. We just kind of shorten it, J.D. We lived just three streets away from Joseph James D'Angelo, known as the Golden State Killer. For many years, we didn't even know it. My daughter babysat for a neighbor who lived three houses down from him. My two sons and my daughter used to ride their bikes by his house every day. He also sat known as the Grumpy Old Man, yelling at neighborhood kids to get off his sidewalk or get off his property. Before he was caught, he was able, not confused, and walking not in a wheelchair. My little sister worked at the horse supply near Sacramento and the Golden State Killer would regularly come in with his daughter and granddaughter. Apparently all the workers thought something was off with the family and he seemed to be a bit overbearing, you know, murderer and all. But when it came out, who he really was, it was not a shock, you know, to the community that he was living such a normal life after everything he had done, or it was a shock, apparently. The stomach is growling. I really got to eat something before I go on the air. You know, it's just better. It's just better for all. I think we got enough of these scumbag murderers, guys. Look at this. Mm, I'm cool with your dumb, like, is that a, a movie camera that you turn into a gun where you're just like waiting to go like action and you shoot, you know? What is she doing? Tell me. That looks like a movie camera or it's straight out of Star Wars. She's got a Star Wars gun there. That's a Star Wars gun. <laughs> Trish, it's true. Trish says, I probably wouldn't read these stories, but it's fun when Mark reads them. <laughs> yeah, I'd try my best to make them funny for you because these people are out of their minds. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like on the way out the door. Leave a comment and share. I'm live at 9 a.m. and after 9 p.m., so join us. This is the Mark Inspire Show.